see. A2. It looks like it is an A2, which means it has a magnesium body here and a uh, two-cylinder motor. All right, so we're going to push this thing outside and take a better look at it. What do we got here? So we got an M274A2 mule, according to the data plate. Like I said, four-wheel steer. Two-cylinder motor. Early ones had a four-cylinder motor. This one's been modified to have an electric start. You know, this is this unit is not original. It's like he adapted some other piece. It looks pretty well done. So that's it. So my issues, or our issues, as we think about buying this thing, um, are general condition. So we're going to do a quick walk around, just look at what uh, at what we're getting here, or potentially getting, and then I want to do a quick uh, compression check on the motor. Um, uh, the the gas tank we already took a quick peek in the gas tank and uh, the the gas we'll show you in a second it's pretty ugly so we don't want to try to run it we just want to find out um, we'll make sure it has oil in it and then we want to do a quick compression check and based on that we can we can be pretty sure that it's not in too bad a shape and we can get it running quickly. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a little ugly. That smells like something other than what it's supposed to be. Look at that. It's interesting to watch. All right, so one of the things that we're worried about when you, and one should be worried about when you buy a, uh, a new vehicle or you're looking at one, is uh, whether the motor is going to be okay. And depending on the condition and what you're paying for it, um, you know, you'll be more or less concerned. So in this case, we're paying, a, the guy's asking a reasonable amount for the, for the vehicle. So we want to make sure that we're not going to have a major motor problem with it. It doesn't run. It hasn't run in a long time. We showed you that the, 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 fuel tank is a mess so we're not going to try to start it without doing some basic maintenance on it cleaning the fuel tank it will, will cause more problems but we do want to see if we've got good compression and what else we can learn about the engine so we want to do a compression test so um, there are two ways to do a compression test on a mule one is to pull start it because it has a pull starter and the other one is if it's equipped with an electric starter to turn it on electrically well if you come over here one of the things we learned today is that when they modified this one to put the electric start in it, they took away the pull starter would have been right there. So we've got no pull starter in here. So there is no pull start in this one. We got to make the electrical system work. So the battery was put right here. I got two leads right there. And um, I got no battery, but I do have a set of jumper cables from the truck. So we're going to hook this up and see what we get. Okay and see if we can turn the motor over. So the first thing we want to do is make sure it's not in gear, um, which we can find neutral here. And this is the key switch, and so we'll see what happens when we turn the key switch on. Not bad, it, it's, it wants to move, but for some reason we're not getting a, a good enough connection. Good mechanicking always about eliminating options and possibilities. So what we're going to do, because I know we can do this, is we're going to go direct to the starter and cut out the whole starting system here. All right, so here I am underneath the mule. Um, I can see the, the, the positive post on the starter right up here. And I can get, I believe, my jumper cable on it and a good connection, which I have there. So that's good, because so that's step one. Let me get over here. 
All right, so I've just taken out the entire wiring system out of this, out, out of the mule for the starting system. So I've got a positive lead coming from my positive battery on the truck directly to the starter. And if I hook it, uh, uh, the negative up to the negative on the, on the vehicle, if the starter is functioning, it will turn this vehicle over. And if it doesn't, then I know I got a bad starter. So it's going to spark, so I'll try to be quick. Whoops. So a little spark in there, a little arcing, not something I want to do all the time, but I ascertained the main thing I wanted to ascertain, which is, is the starter good? And the motor sounds pretty good, really. Again, don't want to start it without cleaning the fuel system out completely and making sure I don't have any fuel leaks or anything else because I could start fires. There's a lot of things that could happen, so one step at a time. But I know I have an electrical wiring problem now. It could be a solenoid, could be a whole bunch of things, and we'll track it down with more tools. But remember, we're trying to evaluate this to buy it and the motor sounds pretty good to me. Um, I wanna do the compression check real quick and we'll see if we've got good compression. And if I have good compression, I got clean oil, I got a good starter and it sounds pretty good, I'm probably not gonna get in too much trouble with, with the motor. So, here we go. All right, so remember to make a motor run, you gotta have three things, right? You gotta have a fuel source, gasoline in this case. You gotta have some spark, which we're not there yet, and you gotta have compression. So we've already told you, I don't want to play with gasoline right now because I got to clean it up. And I'm not too worried about spark yet, but I'm trying to find out compression. And, and the best way to find out whether a motor has compression is with something called a compression tester. Now, this is a used 60s era army um, compression testing kit that we picked up off of eBay. It consists of a gauge with um, a release on it here and a bunch of fittings that will enable you to put it into all different kinds of vehicles. So what we've got to do is go remove a spark plug, put the appropriate adapter in there, connect the adapter to this hose, to the gauge, and hit that start button again and let it turn over and watch the gauge and see what we have. And in this particular case, I think the minimum um, compression is supposed to be about 86 pounds per square inch. So the, you know, we're going to look for something above 80, is 86 is, as evidence that the motor is in probably pretty decent shape. All right, so as a part of this compression check, we had to take out the spark plug. And you can, you can tell a lot about what's going on with the motor by looking at the spark plug. So I just wanted to show you guys this. This doesn't look too bad. It's a little carboned up. Um, if you can see this and look in here. It's a little black residue on it. What that tells you is the motor's running a little bit rich. It's not horrible if it was really, really rich. It would be much darker than this and there'd be more. The, the insulator there has still got some white on it. So it doesn't look too bad. Um, if, it was, if it was completely dry and the other way white, we'd know it was running lean. That's a lot scarier proposition because it's hard on the motor. So again, checkpoint, eh, I look at this, I'm like, all right, we need to do a little adjustment on the carburetor and this thing can be running better than it has been, but not bad at all. The other thing I just want to point out, these are aircraft spark plugs. The motor here is a horizontally opposed two cylinder and um, they, it really is a little aircraft motor is what it is. And uh, these are aircraft style spark plugs and you can see that the, uh, that, that the conductor here screws onto the top, there's a little spring loaded, maybe you can reach down and see. It's, uh, it's got a spring loaded insulator in there and you put that in like so and tighten it down. It's completely waterproof. Um, which is one of the reasons why they did it in the airplanes. You can't have airplane engines stop. It's obviously a pretty tough environment down here if you're running this thing through mud. So they use that technology and it's, uh, it's great. Okay. All right, so we've got this uh, compression tester hooked up. Um, there's a shroud in the way where the spark plug is. So we're just kind of hand tied in here. Um, if I was really, really concerned about getting a perfect measurement, I would want to tighten it up a little bit. But um, we can't really get in there. We're out here in a field, so we're just trying to do this. We, we hand tighten it, which is going to be good enough to give us a reading. And again, it'll either be way low, most likely, um, or it'll be over the 86. And again, if it's way low, what that tells us is something's not going right. The valves aren't closing correctly, or, or there's something else going on in the, in the cylinder. 
Um, if it's working, it should be well in excess of 86, and we know we probably have a good motor, or at least a good gas. All right, so as we just showed you, we got 100 pounds plus or minus a little bit um, on the compression test. Again, hand tight, you know, but, but what that tells us again is that, that, that most likely this motor is going to run fine. Um, and, and so which is one little thing to check off uh, as we think about buying a vehicle that's not running. Um, so I think what we're going to do now is go ahead and, uh, and, and button this thing back up. And um, I think we're kind of done with our inspection. We, we know we got a little electrical wiring problem. We're going to talk to the guy who's trying to sell it and see what kind of final deal we can get. And, uh, but most likely we're going to buy it. We're, we're probably going to drain the gas tank too while we're at it here um, just because it's got full of junk. But on the assumption that we're going to buy it, we're going to drain the gas tank. Depending on how ugly it is, we may have to take it off and clean it out. But uh, we're going to get that done and uh, try to buy it. And the next time we talk to you guys, um, we're going to be a little further along and in a shop. And we're going to be making this thing run for the first time in 10 or 15 years. So if I don't get eaten by, what was that? <laughs> hummingbird. A hummingbird came. That was, I think that's good luck in some culture. So anyway, see you later.